This is Modern Persian Food, a culinary podcast for today's food enthusiasts. We talk about classic Persian flavors, modern recipes, and embracing culture and identity through food. I'm Bita. And I'm also Bita. Welcome to our show. Hi, friends. This is Bita. In light of the current events in Iran, we considered halting broadcasts of our pre recorded content. In the end, we decided to move forward, hoping to provide a respite from troubling thoughts and heavy hearts. We pay respect and tribute to the women of Iran and the Massa Amini movement. Please enjoy the show. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is episode number 105 of the Modern Persian Food Podcast. I am Bita, and I'm here with my lovely co-host, Bita. And we are going to be talking about cooking with rose today. Dried rose petals, such a beautiful ingredient, fragrant ingredient. And actually, maybe a lot of people don't know that this beautiful ingredient can be used in cooking and in drinks, in Persian cuisine, and more. And so we thought we'd take the opportunity to chat about it. I personally don't know too much about rose. It does have a strong flavor that I, I'm learning to like more and more. And I'm curious about some of the new recipes that Bita has been trying out. So let's get into it. Bita Jin, how you doing? Great. I have rose coming literally out of my pores right now, <laughs> <laughs> which puts a smile on my face because in addition to being delicious, in primarily Persian desserts, but also some savory dishes. It is also a mood lifter. So we're gonna do a little quick flashback to our episode number 71, where we had Dr. Matab Jafari talking about the medicinal properties of Persian spices. We have some very interesting studies showing that rose oil, when we just smell it, Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about ingesting it, I'm talking about just smelling it, can improve our mood. So there are now some studies suggesting that just smelling the rose oil can decrease the signs of anxiety. There are some studies ongoing on evaluating the impact of rose, rose petals and rose oil and rose extract on mild depressive symptoms. And going back again to some of our grandmother stories, I remember that in Iran during uh, funerals and sad events, mm-hmm. I would see the friends of my grandma picking something from their little purse and smell it. And I had no idea what it was. And I learned later that they were smelling a very concentrated extract of a rose oil that was in those tiny little bottles in their purses. So when they felt sad and they felt like they were about to have an anxiety attack or I don't know what, they would smell it. So I turned into my grandmother today. I completely (laughs) did. I picked up some rose damascena that is the pure rose oil and I have it in a little vial and I had it in my purse and I took it to a friend who recently lost a loved one and I used the healing properties. So I am so into this. You know, I always like fully live out whatever we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're so great at doing that. I like to live it out. So let's talk about Persian rose relative to using it in a culinary way. First of all, let's just make sure that we understand that we're not going to eat the roses we buy from the flower shop. Yeah. Culinary rose is different in that it hasn't been treated with pesticides. So if you want to grow your own roses and you know that it's pure, that is beautiful and awesome, make sure you designate culinary rose. So yeah, there are many different versions. It comes in dried form. It comes in rose water. And sometimes the dried form is ground up like a powder or spice. I was recently gifted some beautiful dried rose, Gole Mohammadi, from Iran. And they are so beautiful. They're like this bright purple color. And they're actually like the little buds themselves. So it's Mm. super beautiful. Honestly, I don't know really what to do with it. So I'm just looking for some recipes that we can use. You know, I know like rose water and the different foods and desserts and things that rose water is added. But like, what about like dried rose? Like you mentioned sweet. Let's also talk about savory because I do have more, I think, of a savory flavor profile 
you know, I like more savory, I think, than I do sweet, but I I like both. (laughs) Believe me, I'm not discriminating at all. But yeah, I would love to just kind of talk about some recipes that I can use these rose petals in and actually like, how do I do it? Like the little buds. So do I like break it off? Like, yeah, you can't eat the step part, I think. First of all, you're so lucky that you were gifted the rose from Iran. I have some in my freezer as well. I know exactly what you're talking about. The rose buds are beautiful. They're really special. They're vibrant in color and they're just so pretty. Mm -hmm. They're really beautiful to use decoratively. Mm -hmm. They have more ornamental properties, I would say. To use on, you know, a cake or a dessert is how I would use them. As a garnish, those would be really lovely. Mm -hmm. As a flavoring, mostly in sweet dishes and desserts, most commonly in Persian cuisine, but also in some savory. Definitely Persian ice cream, falude. There's these little cookies, the rice flour cookies, nuna berenji. I think you had mentioned toot bitajun. That's almost like the marzipan. Yeah, like these little marzipan baby little cookies are really small. They're kind of like, it looks like a little like berry the way that they do it. And you kind of put a pistachio sliver in one end of it. And it looks like a little like toot, which is like a mulberry. So yeah, that definitely has a beautiful rose water scent to it. Yeah. Rock candy. We have a Persian rock candy that's like on a stick. Uh Uh-huh. Nabot. Nabot. Sometimes it's in saffron flavor. Oftentimes it has a rose essence. Maskati or yachtar behesh. Those are two gluten-free sort of Persian puddings that definitely have a lot of rose water. Mm-hmm. We have Persian milk pudding, sheer berenj, my grandma used to make. I love it. It's a creamy, delicious Persian dessert that has rose water. Gaz is like a nougat, this white candy. Yeah, I love gaz. Nougat, I think, is like the most accurate way to describe it. It's kind of like a a rose kind of taffy, white taffy, and it usually has either pistachios or almonds in it. And you can either get them in kind of like discs and they'll put it in a box and put like flour in the box with the disc so that it doesn't stick together. But a lot of times you can actually get like little individually wrapped little pieces so that they don't stick together. But yeah, gaz is super delicious. Yeah, the fresh ones are soft Mm -hmm. and so good. Really sweet and kind of like powdery. Yeah. Don't forget saffron and rose brittle. There's a very light rose essence in this. Do you know what I'm talking about? Sohan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's different kinds of Sohan. There's like Sohan Asadi mm-hmm. and there's like the more brittle Sohan from Rome that you can get. Yeah. I went through a stage last spring where I was baking a lot. The Yazdi Cakes. Yazdi Cakes mm-hmm. has some rose water baklavas and baklava cakes and cake lavas mm-hmm. have definitely a little bit of rose essence. There is something that people call like a Persian love cake, and it usually has rose water in it. And I think they call it that because of the rose, but there are different versions of it. There's a lot of them out there, but most yep. Persian love cakes have, they're either made with like walnut or almond, or I think mine might be like a gluten-free almond flour version, but they usually are really beautifully decorated. You could make a Persian love cake with your rose buds. Yes, good idea. Yeah, and decorate it with the little buds. So pretty. That's what I use my rose buds for. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God. So fun. Those are such delicious treats. It's really fun to like kind of see that like there's so many different desserts that rose water is in. So I mean, like rose water is definitely one of those flavors that you kind of some people love it. Some people hate it. <laughs> Just to be honest, I think that some people kind of refer to that smell of rose to like a potpourri or spray or something like that. So it's kind of hard for them to disassociate that smell and flavor, you know, while they're eating it, eating like a dessert or something that has rose water in it. But what I love about like the little Persian cookies and things like that is like they're just small bites. So it's not like this overwhelming flavor of rose you're gonna have like one or two of the little cookies that's just like really just a beautiful little taste versus like this overwhelming dish and that's what I love about like rose is that like you can just have a little bit of it and it's pretty satisfying that way exactly yeah good point if you didn't grow up eating it and being surrounded by desserts that tasted that way and Mm -hmm. it may be a little bit off-putting or might take getting used to having it in your food but Uh I encourage you to try if for no other reason to lift your mood yeah absolutely you know I didn't really realize that rose could be in more savory 
foods until kind of like we started the podcast and we were looking into different recipes and things like that in our conversations really taught me that, wait, roast can also go in savory foods too. And what I love about it, you know, some recipes that we'll talk about right now is that the rose is not overwhelming. It's very, very subtle. So like half the time I would not even known that like rose would be added to some of these dishes. Yeah. And again, this is dependent on region. It's dependent on family. Mm -hmm. My experience in terms of my mom's cooking and my mother-in-law's cooking, they do use it. So, you know, it wasn't a surprise to me. And it also is sometimes in Advia, which is sort of like a Persian spice mix. Yeah, that's right. Oftentimes an Advia has sort of like the warming spices and could be mixed in with certain rices. So it might include, again, advias are different from family to family, but it might include like cinnamon, cardamom, nutmeg, rose. Mm -hmm. And it's really quite lovely. I know that my mom likes to use just a little bit of crumbled or ground dried rose in her lupia polo. (laughs) She puts a little bit in there and it's not even, you can't even tell. Yeah. It's just very, very subtle, like you mentioned. I use a very little bit of rose water in my shirin polo mixture. I also use a little bit of orange blossom water and it just makes it even more fragrant when it's cooking down with the carrots and the dried fruits and nuts. It's it's really lovely. Yeah, beautiful. It sounds so beautiful too. Hi friends, just a quick little interruption to say thank you for being a listener to our podcast. And also if you would just take a moment to subscribe and share this podcast with your friends that will help us grow and be able to bring more and more content to you all. So thank you in advance for doing that. Now back to our regular show. So you mentioned rose water. So should we talk a little bit about about rose water? Sure. It's actually really important to talk about. When I was on my adventures with Yazdi Cakes, Uh I was making them right and left. I was making them in Northern California. I was making them in Southern California. I was making them in places that weren't my own home. Yeah. And there was one point where I was testing it and I did not have my usual rose water. So Persian rose water and other Middle Eastern brands of rose water are a bit milder than some of the other versions I've tried. Oh. This particular day, yeah, I could only find a French rose water. Uh-huh. And I bought it. It was quite expensive. It was in a smaller vial. And it could have been just more concentrated. But uh-huh. I made my usual recipe measurements and everything. And it was awful. Oh, no. No offense to the French and, like, the best cuisine, right? But it was different. And so Uh it had like a very, very strong and bitter aftertaste. So be careful, I guess. A little goes a long way. And the type of rose water that you have makes a difference. Okay. Yeah, that sounds interesting. And I know that rose water can be added to some different drinks too. You know, the different sharbat, like the little kind of shrubs or soda, essentially. It's like a syrup that you can add to like sparkling water or regular water or even like a mixture of like different fruits like apple or cantaloupe or something like that to make like a nice refreshing drink. You can add rose water too. And a lot of people do. It makes it a little bit more refreshing. And then you have your special drink that you came up with yeah. last year for our Persian cocktail episode that brought in New Year's Eve with some fun cocktails. Tell us about the Goal Getter. You know, it's it's an unofficial recipe. I never really wrote it out, but it's easy. You don't need to measure it. A play on words, I call it the Goal Getter. (laughs) Go get your goal, but meanwhile, goal in Farsi is flower. Yeah, and it was the beginning of the year, so like New Year's resolutions or goals for the new year. Yeah. That was a fun little play on words. I tried to keep it pink, so I used like a rosé, a little pomegranate molasses, just a touch of rose water, some pomegranate arrows. And then this new idea I had was based off of a restaurant I went to that had chia seeds in its ice cubes. Uh I thought, how fun would it be to put rose petals in the ice cubes? Mm, So pretty. And or the pomegranate arrows. Or you could just use the rose petals as a garnish. But it's a fun little fizzy drink. And you could use just a bubbly water and and keep it non-alcoholic as well. Yeah, and the good thing about rose water is like once you have like a bottle of it, it lasts a long time, right? Oh yeah, it lasts like forever in the refrigerator. I mean, if you asked a real expert, they'd probably say it would lose some of its flavor, but 
I have found that it could last for years in the refrigerator. Well, I just made some rose jam. Yeah, so I wanna know about how that went. I made my first rose jam, and let me tell you, I was really nervous because I asked my mother-in-law about it, who's the expert on all Persian cooking in our family, and she actually will dry her own rose. She shared some with me, it's very aromatic. Uh So I asked her in preparation for this episode if she'd made rose jam, and she said she's tried, but it was a disaster. And I thought, if my mother-in-law, who's- Oh no owned a flower shop for 20 years, who has a green thumb and is such a good chef, couldn't make it, how am I gonna make it? But somehow the jam gods were with me and I made such a beautiful jam yesterday for the first time I made rose jam. Yay! It was the easiest jam I've ever made. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put two cups water, two cups sugar, stirred it until it dissolved. And then I squeezed half a lemon. I then added one cup of dried, culinary rose petals. About half of it was from Iran that I had had in my refrigerator and a little bit was from oh, okay. my mother-in-law's garden and a little was from my mom. So maybe it was just mixed with love. Mm-hmm. I cooked it down, I think for about 15 minutes. And I also stirred in some cornstarch. Oh. Here is a beets cheat. When you're making jam, typically you're making like a fruit jam or compote, right? Uh Uh-huh. And fruit typically has natural pectins. Pectin, right. Especially, you know, like apples and quince definitely has plenty of pectin, so you don't need a thickener. But rose doesn't have any pectin, so you can buy pectin powder type of thing, but I didn't have any. So I used cornstarch. I just put like one or two teaspoons of cornstarch, and it did the trick. Oh, wow. And, you know, I allowed it to cool, and this morning I put it on a piece of toasted sourdough with vegan butter, loads of my rose jam, chopped up walnuts, and I tell you, I wish you could all have a bite of this because Mm. I was transported to heaven. It was just like the best thing I've had in so long. That's awesome. I think it's like my favorite thing ever. You know, I'm so glad that you were able to do that because I know that you really love rose jam. (laughs) You're always talking about rose jam. So I'm so glad you were able to make your own. Thank you. I was happy. Yeah. If you don't want to use rose, you don't have it, you don't like it, or you're making it for someone who doesn't like it, you can always substitute with vanilla. Vanilla is a great substitution for it. Or if you want, you can get like a little like almond extract or something that kind of has like a a special, unique little flavor to it. So if you don't want rose, you don't have to force it. You can totally substitute vanilla or almond extract or something. You can absolutely substitute one of those for it. Yeah, and if speaking of like floral essences and spices, I have a lavender blueberry cupcake recipe. That's another one you have to be real careful on in terms of not putting too much. Uh-huh. Yeah. That must be the general rule with flowers and food is just use a little. A little goes a long way. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. You know, I do want to say that like as a culture, flowers, gold, rose are such a special part of our culture. You made reference to your mother-in-law, who you guys lovingly call MJ, Jeanne June. We had an episode on gold, not rose as we're talking about today, but gol in general in Persian cooking. And I just wanted to take a moment to listen to one little part of that episode, which she does such a great job just kind of like painting the picture of the importance of flower and love in Persian culture. And, you know, flowers are the essential part of Iranian and the way of the life in Iran. Mm-hmm. The country is literally called the country of flowers and nightingale because just give us a little bit of potted flowers running a stream and a book of poetry. And we are very happy mm-hmm. to spend our hours just looking at the flowers and just immerse ourselves on the beauty of it. So I just love how she talks about like the stream and it's such a beautiful like picture that is painted in my mind as she describes all of that. So I just wanted to share that with our listeners. Thank you. Oh, so lovely. Yeah. Well, you know, we didn't have an Ask the Beats today, but we wanted to let you all know that we'd love to feature you and your special voice. You can leave us an audio message if you're on Instagram. 
you're able to do that. We will share it on the show along with your handle. Send us your questions. I'm looking forward to that so we can kind of get like our real listener voices. So feel free to use that as a way to communicate with us or send us a message or send us an email. And we would love to answer your questions on air and continue to build our connection and relationship with you all. So with that, thank you all for joining and we hope you have a really great day. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.